Hey, welcome back to Bob's Two Car Garage. Stick around. I'm going to show you how we turn this garage into some office space. Hi, my name is Bob and I love my two car garage. Now we bought these ready to assemble cabinets from a local manufacturer. They were a bit pricey, but uh, I got them for wholesale. So it was what's in, in their budget and you really do get what you pay for. So we're putting together our ready to assemble cabinets here and there's not like specific instructions. It's not like buying something from Ikea where it tells you exactly what to do. So there is a sequence that you're supposed to follow. And for the most part, we follow the sequence. It is really kind of a two-man job because you get to a certain point and if you're not holding on to certain parts then everything can fall over and that could be a disaster. Now wherever we had two cabinets that came together like this the panels here do not show, obviously, because it comes together right there like a big sandwich. So at that point, we didn't use any glue. All we did was just screw each of these um, shelves or dividers uh, to the panel. So we're going to try to get this as perfect as possible. You can always... You can always fix stuff later, but it's nice to have it perfect the first time. Most of the time, these panels did show on the end. So in this situation, we used glue and nails. Glue is always a good idea. And you can go back later and fill up those little nail holes with a special putty stick that they make for these cabinets that matches the finish exactly. Now we decided to go with a thermal foil finish. It comes in a lot of different colors. It's a lot like laminate, like uh, Formica or Wilson Art, but it comes this way. I think it's a good choice for garage cabinets. Uh, pretty durable. The downside is, is that you're, you're not gonna be able to paint over this. So you have to get the, the color that, that you like because you're stuck with it. On the backs here, we stapled them really well wherever we could. So we got a, a uh, fixed shelf right here and uh, put a bunch of staples in from the back side. Staples really are the best thing to use for your backs because they won't pull out uh, like a regular nail or something like that. And a lot of stuff gets thrown up against the back side of your cabinet and it, that back tends to get pushed away. So make sure whatever cabinets you're get, putting together Make sure that you staple that back in real well. All right, so putting these cabinets together is the easy part. Then we need to install them. Now, so this is really the more important step. We got to get them nice and level, and we got to get them nice and plumb in all three directions. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is build some toe kicks for the floor on this side as well. We already did it on the other side of the room. And because this is a garage, I'm gonna make my toe kicks out of uh, treated two by fours. You never know what's gonna happen in the garage. You might get some water in here. You wanna be able to hose it out or whatever. So I'm used to using treated two by fours, which don't look really good. However, once I get it installed, I can face it with uh, something that's painted. Uh, so treated two by fours for my toe kicks. So here's my basic framing for my toe kick. Two cabinets are gonna sit on top of this. I made this whole thing uh, an inch and a half shorter than the width of the cabinet. So the cabinet's gonna hang over three quarter on one side, three quarter on the other side. And on the front, I'm gonna have a uh, recess or a toe kick depth of three inches. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this together and then we're gonna level it out. So 
So at this point, getting these toe kicks nice and level is important. And I have obviously a quite a bit of a uh, slope to this garage floor right here. So put, putting my six foot level on my toe kick, and I'm gonna raise this up until I got a bubble in the middle. And then I'm gonna add, looks like about three quarters of an inch over there. So I'll cut a slice of wood, stick it in there, see what it's, see what it's at. But I need to get this toe kick nice and, or the surface, the top side of the toe kick, nice and level so that my cabinet will be nice and level. We also need to level it out from there down to there. So I'm doing the same thing. Just putting my big level on there, making sure my bubble is in the middle. I'm gonna add some stuff to level this whole thing out. So when you look at these cabinets, they're gonna be nice and uh, level all the way across the top and the bottom. So these little blocks are gonna get us really close to where we need to be. If it's not perfect, which it does look really, really good right now, but if it's not perfect, we can come back later and shim it up here and there to make it perfect. Now in some places, this stem wall sticks out about three or four inches further than the wall itself. So we had to make some modifications on the back of the cabinet right here to uh, make it fit. So we just cut out the back side of the cabinet on the bottom. In some places, we just used uh, a skill saw and cut it out because it wasn't gonna show. But there's some places where it was gonna be, show a little bit more. So we used a router with a flush cutting bit to make those cuts nice and clean. So on the back side of two of these cabinets, we only need to take off about a half an inch off the bottom side, which is nice because there's enough room down here where I don't have to cut out the back, I don't have to cut out the bottom. And I want a nice clean cut. So what I did is I clamped on a piece of quarter inch right here, and um, that's gonna give me a half inch hanging over. Then I'm gonna take my flush cutting bit with my router, and I'm gonna cut that back side off. The router is going to give it a nice, clean cut. It's going to look perfect. Look at that, a nice, clean cut. Looks like it's supposed to be that way. A couple of things that need to happen. You need to really kind of take it slow at this point when you install that cabinet. You just don't want to throw it up against the wall and hope for the best. So down below here, I've got my toe kick all leveled out. And on the wall, I made some marks where my studs are and I tested to make sure that my studs are actually there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that cabinet up there. But first, I was sure to make sure that it's ready to go. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> That's fun. Now this is a probably an obvious note, but you need to think about this stuff when you're in the planning stage. Obviously, we want the cabinet door to open, and there might be some things that are in the way, like this track right here that opens the garage door. So save yourself some grief and make sure that you think through some of that stuff be before you go out and buy the cabinet. Yeah, they did it. Yeah. Once again, handling these MDF core cabinets really is a two-man job. So get yourself a helper. Don't try to handle it by yourself. If you drop something at the wrong time, you can do some damage at might cost you a little money, so get somebody to help you on the assembly. So our toe kick is just floating down there. It's not fastened to the wall or to the floor, which I would normally do that, but we tried to fasten it to the floor before and the nail wouldn't go into the concrete. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna let it float down there, but we're gonna attach the toe kick to the cabinet and uh, so it won't move around.
Okay, so we're checking out our cabinet right here, and remember it's got to be level and plumb in all three directions. So I put a bubble on it right here, this way, and it's perfect. We're definitely going to live with that. But this way, it's a little bit off. So it looks like it's a little bit too leaning forward. So we're going to shim it at the bottom and also a little bit on the back side to make this thing perfectly plumb and level. So I tried shimming it on the bottom, but that didn't work. It just lifted the whole cabinet up. So I shimmed it down here on the bottom. And now when I put a bubble on it, It is perfect, and that's what we're looking for, perfection. So now that we got it perfect, we're going to put some screws up in the top. And I'm using two and a half inch construction screws. It should be enough to hit the studs in the back side. These two cabinets, we're going to level them out and plumb them up together because we want them to be, uh, we want them to be match up with each other. So I'm going to clamp this together and then put some screws in here to hold them as one big unit. And then we'll do the same thing we did with the other side. We'll use shims and such to make everything level and plumb. That looks good. I'm using inch and a quarter screws to screw these two cabinet panels together. Okay, so we're ready. We got all our cabinets installed, which is really cool. They look nice. And we we're ready to put in the hinges. And we have these Bloom self-closing hinges that, and the uh, plates that go on the inside of the cabinet, the cabinet side plate, uh, has these little plastic dowels that fit down into these pre-drilled holes right here. So uh, Luke's gonna install them because he's got a technique going on. He's doing a great job. But um, these are made to be inserted with a machine that you only have one of those machines if you're a big factory. And we're not a big factory. So it's not necessary to have these machines. You can pound these in with just a mallet or a hammer and a block of wood. So. Luke's going to do a bunch of them right now. Okay, so here's our little pre-drilled holes that we need to uh, work with right there. And there's our little plastic dowel. There's an arrow on here that shows you which way is the front. Really easy to put this in backwards. In fact, I've done it already. But uh, this will just slide in there like that. It pushes in even by hand. And then you can just tighten these screws up like this and it pulls itself right up against the face of the or inside of the panel of the cabinet. So these are really easy. Just make sure you get the arrow going the right way. Another nice thing about these Euro style uh, hinges is that you can adjust them in three different ways. So they go up, down, back, forth, left and right. So uh, a lot less struggle with these hinges uh, than the old style ones. All you need is a Phillips head screwdriver and you can make these cabinet doors look perfect. final things we did is we wanted to make this toe kick look a little nicer. We didn't want that treated lumber to show. So we ripped some quarter inch maple plywood and painted it the same color as the thermofoil cabinets. And then we just stapled it in place. 
The floor, of course, is sloped. That means that these had to be tapered. So we just cut each of those uh, individually to fit underneath on the toe kick, make it look a little nicer. For mounting all these handles, I made a little template like this. And really carefully, I uh, drilled where, or I made some drill holes where I need the handles to go. This is important to get those nice and accurate because if it's off just a little bit, it seems like it shows a lot. I made a couple of them just in case I messed up on the first one. And actually I did make up, mess up on the first one. So actually this is my third one. This is my second one. And I'm gonna drill uh, a bunch of holes for handles. I got four times five. So I got 20 handles to drill, uh, holes to drill uh, for handles. I'll do that right now. And I made this template so that I could reverse it. So I can put it on this way, I can flip it over, put it on this way, line it up with the bottom of the door, and they should be lined up with each other. Again, I wanna be as accurate as possible because that's what I like to a lot if you get it wrong. Now where you position your handles or your knobs is kind of depends. I like to line them usually up with some line like a rail on top of the, uh, or that's on the top of the cabinet door, but there is no particular place where it has to be. On these up here, because it's up higher, uh, I, I put the knob up higher because, or the pull up higher because it, it's easier that way. So form does follow function when it comes to the positioning of those knobs, but usually you're gonna find a line on the cabinet door that is the obvious place to put it. Interesting little thing going on right here. This one looks a little higher than that one, and it is a little higher than that one, but really the problem is that the, the, the door is higher than the other door. I can adjust the height of the door, but once I drill the holes, I can't adjust the height of those handles. So I measure it off the top, to uh, determine where those handles are gonna fall. Just a finer point, but might be kind of important. All right, so that's how we did it. Now Luke has a nice place to do all his cool video stuff, and my daughter has a great place to store all her stuff. So, wanna leave you today with this proverb that says, diligent hands will rule, but laziness leads to forced labor. You don't want that to happen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.